Hi guys, welcome back to another video on Apache Cassandra. In the last video, we talked about how the snitch uses the gossip protocol to pass data about the cluster and the topology of the cluster from one node to another. In this video, we'll discuss the gossip protocol, how it works, and what data about the cluster is passed around. In very large clusters, each node has data that it needs to pass to every other node. So we need to know what is the fastest and most efficient way to achieve this. The gossip protocol can be thought of sort of like a virus where each node infects a small amount of other nodes who then go on to affect another small amount of nodes and so on. And this infection spreads exponentially throughout the cluster. So the gossip protocol is not synchronous. One node doesn't have to tell every node at the same time. It simply tells a small amount of nodes who then continue to pass this data along. So say for instance, we have a cluster shown in this picture and we have the nodes one, two, three, four, and five. What will happen is node one will start a gossip protocol with say node two and node five. And this will mean that node one will pass the data it knows to node two and the data it knows about itself to node five. At the same time, node three might initiate a gossip protocol with node four, and it will also initiate a gossip protocol with node five. So then in the next round of gossip, say node five will initiate a gossip protocol with node two and node three. So this means that as node five has already received data from node one, what it's actually gossiping to node two is data about itself, node five, but also about node one and the same for node three. So node three will receive data from node five that will contain information about the current state of node five and node one. And as the gossip spreads around the cluster, more nodes will become aware of more nodes. And so the gossip will contain more and more up-to-date data about the cluster until it reaches the point where every node almost knows everything about all nodes in the cluster. And you might say that in very, very big clusters where there's say 25,000 nodes, these gossiping sessions might contain quite a large amount of data. But in fact, the data is quite small. We'll look at exactly what it contains, but in a real cluster, gossiping protocol is very efficient and doesn't take up a lot of bandwidth. In Cassandra, there is a set number of steps that each node follows when it starts gossiping. Each node will start a gossip session every one or two seconds. The node will choose one to three nodes at random to start gossiping with, but it will slightly favor nodes that it knows are down or having small trouble with performance. It doesn't maintain any memory of the nodes it's already gossiped with. So we might wanna know what kind of data is sent in these gossip sessions that our nodes are taking part in. What is actually being sent is metadata about the state of our cluster. And this basically contains two types of data. It contains data called heartbeat state, and it contains data called application state. And the heartbeat state contains two main pieces of data. It contains information about when the node started, and it contains data about the timestamp for this gossiping session, so when this piece of gossip data was sent. And the application state contains data about the current status of the node. So it contains the status itself, which can be, as we saw, stuff like normal, leaving, or joining the cluster. It contains data used by the snitch, i.e. what data center this node is in, what rack it is in as well. It contains data on the schema. So the schema, i.e. what our tables and key spaces should contain. And this is useful if we ever need to change the schema because we'll be able to pass this throughout the cluster using the gossip protocol. It also contains information on the load that the current node is under. So this load is basically the disk pressure that this node is currently under and is a good indication of the performance of the node. And it also contains something called severity, which is the IO pressure that the node is currently under. And the combination of the load and severity will give us a good indication of the current performance of the node. 
and the DC and rack will be able to tell the snitch where the node is located. We also might be interested in knowing what a gossiping session between two nodes looks like. So if we have these two nodes here, node one and node two, what kind of communication can we expect to see in the gossiping protocol between these two nodes? So what actually happens is node one initiates a gossiping session with node two, and it will send data on all of the nodes it knows about with all the data we saw in the previous part of the video included. What it will contain is the IP of each node it knows, the heartbeat state, which includes the timestamp for each node, and also the application state, which is basically kind of a representation of the health of the node. And it will send this for multiple nodes. So this could be the IP of this node. It will send it for another node, the IP of that node as well, another node, and so on. And it will send all this information to node two in the first part of the communication for this round of gossip. Node two itself will have a similar state stored in its node. So we'll have the IP of all the nodes it knows about, the heartbeat state, including the timestamp. It will also have the application state for each node, which is the health. And it will have that for itself. And it will have that for a number of other nodes on the cluster. And what it will do is it will compare each node it knows about to each node that node one has told us about and see using the heartbeat state for each node, which information is more up to date. Is the information it already knew about more up to date or is the information the other node is sending it more up to date? If it finds that in fact, its data is more up to date, it will send back to node one a list of nodes that it knows are more up to date. Node one will receive that and it will in turn update its internal state to hold the data that node two has said is more up to date. So now we know that the internal state of node one and node two is the same and is up to date because they have both updated based on the data node one has sent in the initial message for the gossip and based on the response node two generated from the difference between node one state and node two state. Finally, node one will send a final acknowledgement to node two to say that it has received the amendments node two has sent us. So that's the basics of how the gossip protocol works between two nodes. We've seen how the gossip protocol works in general on a whole cluster, and we've seen what kind of data is contained in each gossip message. So thanks for watching the video, guys. If you have any questions on the gossip protocol, please don't be afraid to leave them in the comments section. If you enjoy the video or found it helpful, please subscribe to the channel as plenty more videos on Cassandra will be on the way. And please give the video a thumbs up.